Is it possible for Apple to save the HomePod and turn it into somewhat of a success? Well, there's a lot of different ways to approach this conversation and look at the HomePod as a market, whether it's a failure or somewhat of a major player. And there's a lot to dive into getting into the specifics and talking a lot about definitions of different words and what your interpretation of everything is. So without further ado, let's begin. Most people on the internet will tell you that the HomePod was objectively and without question a failure. There's no way to go about it. HomePod only equated for what? 6% of the smart speaker market. Therefore, it must be a failure. But I encourage you to follow up that thought a little bit and just say, well, is a product a failure if it's just not a very large portion of a market? Because in that way, the Mac line has never been really a success since way back in the 80s and maybe 90s. Ever since PCs took off, Apple Macintosh computers have, for the most part, always been a fairly small piece of the computer market. Between MacBook Pros, MacBook Airs, and iMacs and Mac Pros, they are always drastically outnumbered by Windows PCs. So does that mean that every Mac Apple has ever made is a failure? Well, most people wouldn't say that, but they would admit, while the Mac is not the vast majority of computers out there, it does have a designated piece of the market. There are people who enjoy Mac OS and their MacBooks and IMAX. There's a market for it. It's not the majority, but it's there and they appreciate it. I would almost say the same thing about Apple's HomePod. Not to the same size or scale, of course, but there are people out there who have purchased and enjoyed the HomePod. And even though we see a lot of criticism for it on the tech community, if you go to Best Buy or if you go look at what most people who have made the purchase for a HomePod think of it, they're very, very happy with it. Overall, sound quality is quite impressive for its size. Siri, while not being the smartest digital assistant, out there can get done what a lot of people need for everyday tasks. Is she good at the random factual knowledge based stuff? No. Google Assistant and the Amazon Echo devices are always probably going to be ahead there. But this is when I encourage you to look at those smart speakers as a success or a failure in many different ways. Maybe if you dictate success by how much money a company is making off of a particular product, then the Amazon Echo in the Google Home Mini may not actually be that successful. While they are by far the most common smart speakers on the market, equating for over 80% of smart speakers sold is just those two cheap, very, very small digital assistant powered smart speakers. Research has shown that between the Google Home Mini and even the third generation Amazon Echo Dot, the money it costs to actually manufacture those things is often more than what they're charging for them. Both of these speakers are known for going on sale quite often, and research has shown us that the parts for these things ignoring the research and development, ignoring the marketing, and ignoring the software updates that they go through to make them smarter and better over time, ignore all that and you just look at the sum of their parts, they're actually selling them at a loss half the time because they always try to sell them at a discounted price. Get the Echo Dot for $25 today or get the Google Home Mini for $25 for the summer. It's on sale for three months. It's very, very common to see these things on sale and it's very clear that both Amazon and Google didn't want to make a profit off of these smart speakers. All they really cared about was being the majority of the smart speakers out on the market. They wanted to have a dominant share because they're making most of their money with the usage of the speaker, with advertisers paying for their results to show up when searching things via Google search, or in this case, searching things via Google Assistant. They're going to make their money by analyzing data. And as lots of evidence has come forward lately, both Amazon and Google have been known to not keep these conversations you have with your smart speaker that entirely secure. Neither of them have been known for being very privacy focused, whereas Siri, on the other hand, has not really been caught red handed in many scandals. You don't often hear that, oh, Apple can read all of the conversations you had with Siri and your HomePod. Granted, Siri has a lot of work to go through. She is not the smartest digital assistant, but she is getting better with iOS 13. They talked a little bit about the HomePod improvements we're going to be seeing later this year. Granted, I'm sure it doesn't quite keep up with the Google Assistant and the Amazon Echo devices but comparable enough for a lot of people. And are some people willing to take that compromise in knowledge and in-depth analysis and replace it with encryption? Not everyone, but some definitely do. I think some people are much more comfortable knowing that Apple, which is a much more security and privacy-based company, is putting a microphone that's constantly plugged in and technically constantly listening in your home, knowing that it's the central hub for your smart home devices and it's going to play music at incredibly crisp quality. The HomePod definitely has that that 
market. It's not a huge portion of it, but it's there. Now, without a doubt, the sales of the HomePod do not compete with the Google Home Mini or Echo Dot, but we all know those are completely different markets. In fact, I'm pretty confident that the HomePod has sold a lot better than the Google Home Max, and that's probably a speaker that it would be more comparable to, both for the price range and the sound quality. It can be subjective which one you actually think is better, but objectively, the HomePod sounds a lot better than either of those cheapo assistant devices because they're not focused on sound quality. Their main focus is just being cheap, getting the digital assistant into homes, analyzing that user data of those conversations you have, or like I've already experienced with my Amazon Echo Dot, they wanna make sure you start adding things to your shopping cart so that checking out things on Amazon is easier and quicker than it ever has been before. In fact, when I asked my Amazon Echo what the most expensive Echo device was, she instantly just added a second Echo Dot to my Amazon cart. Nowhere in the conversation did I say, hey, I would like to buy another Echo product. She was just like, oh, you're asking what's the most expensive one? Let me just add a cheap one into your cart. Obviously didn't get me to buy it, but clearly Amazon is taking the hit on the hardware sales of that speaker so that they can make the profit on the long-term use of that assistant. Apple's not too preoccupied with that. Siri's not really trying to sell you stuff, and it's also not trying to record your conversation so it can analyze that data, send it to other companies, or profit off of you, the user, at the end of the day. It's mainly just focused at getting things done, whether it's sending messages, setting timers, putting alarms, or playing music. It covers very, very basic things that a digital assistant should do, and like many people online would agree, it should do a lot more and Siri needs to be a lot smarter, and I totally agree with you. But my last proposal for today's video is that maybe there's a way Apple can turn the HomePod into something that's not necessarily just about the ultra-sounding speaker, not necessarily just about rocking the house and being really, really loud and very, very high quality for the size. What if Apple actually went a little bit more into the direction that Amazon and Google went with their smaller products? I'm not talking about losing money because unlike Google and Amazon, Apple actually has to turn a profit with this smart speaker because they're not making money off of selling you products through Siri and they're not making money off of analyzing your conversations with Siri. But if they just made a slightly more affordable, sure, maybe not as loud, maybe the sound quality is not as good, but a more affordable, more obtainable to the masses digital assistant speaker that is able to still be your hub for home kit accessories, that's able to be an encrypted digital assistant that's very easy to set up thanks to the Apple ecosystem and giving people more reason to subscribe to Apple Music and Apple services, which they care so much about. Imagine if Apple essentially made a HomePod mini. Now, I know the counter argument that a lot of people are gonna take to this because they think, well, the whole selling point of the HomePod is the sound quality because they knew Siri would not be as good as the other digital assistants. But I'm wondering if, even though it wouldn't be the majority, I'm sure that a HomePod mini, even if it was the same size as the Echo Dot, would probably cost $100 just because it's Apple and just because it's encrypted and they're trying to make a profit off of those sales. And unlike Amazon and Google, who are willing to take a hit on the profit margin when they individually sell this hardware, maybe just try to sell people on the fact that it's encrypted, it's secure, you don't have to worry about it analyzing your conversations. And believe it or not, Siri is still one of the most used digital assistants every single day because she's so accessible. She's on our watches, our TV, our Mac, our iPads, our phones. She's everywhere. And perhaps some people would like to access her on a dedicated speaker that can play music when they want to and answer some questions and send some texts when people need it and, and hopefully get that different voice authentication that we're being promised from the Worldwide Developers Conference into a more affordable package for the people that are not extreme audiophiles who don't care that much about the audio balancing and mixing that the HomePod is so well known for. I still think it's possible for you to make a good sounding speaker that is definitely not going to be as cheap as the Google Home Mini or the Echo Dot, but at least show that the HomePod market can be a little bit bigger than only a speaker that starts at $300 and occasionally goes on sale. So there's not any leaks, there's not any rumors suggesting Apple is working on a next-gen HomePod. I just wanted to make today's video because I think it's possible for Apple to make the HomePod a bit more of a smart speaker accessory that people can take seriously and not just an expensive joke. And if they really wanted to push inventory, because right now I feel like the only reason Apple made the HomePod is to give people more reason to subscribe to Apple Music. And I get it, Apple's more of a services company now. They're more focused on getting people to subscribe to their monthly subscription. But if their motivation for the HomePod changed just a little bit and they just wanted to make sure they pushed as much inventory as possible, then I would say get rid of the iOS only support, allow it to work with Bluetooth enabled devices so that even if someone has Android, they can still play music
music to their HomePod because this is the Apple Music machine, right? Apple Music's on the Play Store. Apple was totally okay with providing their service to both major platforms. And I think if they wanted the HomePod to sell well, then yeah, that would be a good move on their part to ensure that both Android and iOS users or anyone essentially who has a Bluetooth enabled device is able to output audio to the HomePod. And by the way, there's Bluetooth tech inside every HomePod already. It's literally just a software update away for them to enable it on all HomePods that are already set up. So wouldn't take much if they wanted to change the game with it, but as of now, it's really just a selling point for Apple Music. If you want a very, very good sounding speaker and you're willing to pay top dollar for it, and you also want the Siri smarts enabled and everything. I'm sure a ton of you don't agree with me, but I want to talk more about it, so make sure to hit me up over on Twitter or join our Discord. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you guys in the next one.